In section 7.3, I introduce the idea of areas under the normal curve. In the earlier section, section 7.1, I introduced the idea that any randomly varying system will distribute in a shape that we refer to as the normal curve, this bell shape, this symmetric peak shape. The normal curve centers um, it centers on the population mean, mu, the population mean, mu. But we don't usually know the population mean, so we use the sample mean x bar as a point estimate, a point estimate of the population mean. So technically this is the mean, the population mean, but in reality we don't have the population values so we just use the sample mean. I'm going to use the marble example from section 5.3. I'll link the video to that below. In that case the mean was 5.2 for 184 marbles. 5.2. So this would be 5.2 grams. And the standard deviation in that particular example was 0 0.4. I'm rounding off here. It turns out that on the normal curve, this place here will be 0 0.4 above the mean. This will be the sample standard, one sample standard deviation above the mean. So this will be 5.2 plus 0.4. This will be at 5.6 grams. And this point right here, that will be one standard deviation below the mean. 5.2 minus 0.4, 4.8 grams. These two places are referred to as inflection points. They are where the curve goes from a if you will permit me, a frowny face to a half of a smiley face. These changes in direction are called inflection points. It's half of a smiley. And they occur at minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation above and below the mean. So it's the distance that's 0 0.4 standard deviations above and 0 0.4 below the mean, which is at the center of the, of the curve for a randomly varying system. Now, you might recall that this is really a line chart version of a histogram that had columns, and each column had a height equal to the relative frequency. And so, and when I added these up, they added up to the to one, the total probability. That's still true. I no longer have columns. I have a line chart version of the histogram. But if I could add up the columns underneath this curve, they would add up to the probability. That is, if I knew what the columns were between 4.8 and 5.6, the columns we no longer see, I could tell you the probability that data is between those two values. The area under the curve, as we say, is the probability. And this has been worked out for us, actually. The normal curve actually has a very mathematically predictable shape. So it turns out that between one standard deviation below the mean, so I'm going to write this as a sample mean minus one standard deviation, sample standard deviation. But we'll later have to make an adjustment in the curve because this is really the population mean minus one population standard deviation here. Uh, but we don't know those. And the adjustment we'll have to make is for uh, the sample standard deviation. We'll have to use a modified normal distribution known as a T distribution. But we'll tackle that later. This area right here is just 0.34. 34% of the data is in that area. Another 34% of the data is in on this side. 
over here, 34% of the area is over here. Together, that means that 68% of the data is between here and here. We have 68% of the data should be between here and here, 0 0.68. If I go out one more standard deviation, say I go up another plus 0.04, and I go down another 0.04, this place here, and I'll, I'll mark it in sample value, sample mean plus two stand, sample standard deviations, and the sample mean minus two standard deviations. For statisticians who are upset right now, I'll later on use the t-distribution, which looks like this, but a, a little bit flatter, if you will. But that said, between here and here, between minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations above and below the mean, I will see roughly 95.45% of the data will be within that range. Beyond that, out here, this is the right tail, I would expect about 2.5% of the data out there, roughly. And out here in the left tail, I'd expect 2.5% of the data. What this will let us do is determine whether a data value is likely to be from this distribution or not. If somebody says, I've got a marble of 5.1, is that likely to be in this distribution? Yes, 5.1 is right in here. That's likely, highly likely to be from the same group of marbles. But as we saw in an earlier, uh, uh, much earlier video on outliers, there are some marbles down around two grams, 1.8 grams. That would be way down here. That would be highly unlikely. It's off the left end of, of the graph here. Uh, that would not be a likely value. It must be a very different marble. And we saw that it was. It's one of these little Sinai uh, or Sinai marbles, these tiny little marbles. And that's what the normal curve will help us determine is what is the probability that a value may lie at a certain distance away from the mean. We can begin to calculate that because the area under the curve is the probability. So key points are the normal curve centers on the mean for us, the sample mean, which we use as a point estimate of the population mean. And these two inflection points occur at plus and minus one standard deviation above and below the mean. So if you can figure out where those inflection points are, you can actually estimate what your standard deviation is. That also means that if the standard deviation is smaller, the normal curve will be a little narrower. If the standard deviation is larger, the normal curve will flatten out. And so you can actually get families of normal curves. So if you have a, a smaller standard deviation, you might see a narrower, taller normal curve. And if you have a larger standard deviation, the inflection points will curl out farther and you'll get a little bit lower, flatter curve, if you will. That's a really rough estimate and a messy diagram at this point. But that's uh, an introduction to the idea that the areas under the normal curve are the probability of data being within that range. And it also tells you how much data is in there. And 68% of the data is between plus and minus one standard deviation. About 95% of your data should be between minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations above and below the mean. This centers on the mean. You'll also see reference to the standard normal curve. And in the standard normal curve, that's the curve using the z-scores that we met earlier in the course. The standard normal curve, that's a really crude drawing of it, but in the standard normal curve, zero is under the center. This is z equals zero, and this is z equals one. And this goes back to the z-scores that we met earlier in the course. This is negative one, this is positive one. Out here is minus two z and plus two z. Remember the z scores were just the number of standard deviations you are above the mean. So if you hear reference to the standard normal curve, you're talking about transforming your data into z scores and then plotting the normal curve. Uh, but that's, uh, that's not going to be as useful to us in this particular course. But if you do see reference to that, that's what they're talking about, converting to z-scores and then working out areas.
This used to be a way we looked up values in tables. 